Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining the session. Uh, today, we are going to talk about Girdle, which is a unified scheduler for online and offline workload. Uh, yeah, I'm Ling Tong. This is my teammate, Yue. Uh, we are from scheduling and orchestration team from ByteDance. Uh, Girdle, actually, it's an alternative uh, scheduler in Kubernetes cluster. Uh, it was designed for resolve our major, uh, major pain points uh, in-house by dance. And it was open source late 2023. Uh, here's the agenda for today. We are going to break it down into two par uh, four parts. Uh, first, uh, firstly, we are going to take a high-level overview of Girdle, and uh, including some backgrounds and uh, high-level uh, architecture. After that, we are going to work through some key features we introduced in Girdle, and uh, along with some uh, fantastic demo. Uh, after that, we are going to cover some of the achievements we have made so far uh, in both uh, production and uh, academia. Uh, to wrap up this session, we are going to uh, cover some of the related uh, future work sitting on our roadmap. Okay, yeah, let's take a look at the overview first. Uh, somebody might already have the question in your mind, and why do we need another scheduler? Since there are so many options are, are available in the community, community, and why don't we just use that? So, yeah, as I said, we, are, we designed this scheduler to resolve our major point we uh, faced with in the uh, in Binance. So, f uh, first thing first, uh, it is a, a infrastructure scale. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at the number together. So within ByteDance, there are uh, more than uh, 500 uh, large-scale cluster of the world uh, uh, regarding about large-scale large cluster. We mean a cluster with more than 1,000 uh, uh, nodes. And uh, in the largest cluster, there are, there are around like 20K heterogeneous server and around one million pods. So yeah, I, I believe that's huge. And uh, from another perspective, uh, over 200 uh, million of containerized application, including both online and offline application, uh, are running in, within our global infrastructure every day. OK, here's another reason. Uh, we have heterogeneous workload from different business groups. And uh, different types of uh, workload have different performance metrics. So uh, specifically for uh, uh, offline applications such as machine learning training, batch jobs uh, focus more on uh, minimizing the completion time, uh, while for uh, others like uh, data processing, video coding, and streaming uh, emphasize more on uh, throughput. And uh, on the other hand, like on online application, uh, uh, something like microservices, inference, and uh, recommendation system are all like uh, latency critical. And uh, yeah, that gives us different requirements on scheduling such kind of workload. And uh, apart from that, um, such kind, uh, we also have some advanced uh, like resource requirement to achieve better uh, performance, uh, such as like topology affinity. So as we uh, are familiar, like for uh, training and uh, machine learning jobs, uh, we have the requirement of affinity to GPU, while for uh, machine learning inference, we might be, uh, we might want to our workload to be NUMA aware to get uh, like faster, uh, higher CPU frequency and faster memory access. So uh, here's another reason, last but not the least. Uh, so before Girdle, uh, we have isolated computer infrastructure. Uh, I believe that's uh, the same for many companies. And uh, yeah, we, ha we run like uh, my uh, microservices on Kubernetes and uh, data intensive application on Yarn. So, it creates split brain in terms of resource management. Uh, it's not, uh, it, it makes this uh, like resource utilization improvement, uh, like cost of an optimization very hard. And uh, it 
end up with the issue, uh, aka the major uh, like uh, pain points like uh, resource fragmentation uh, and uh, low resource utilization and the poor uh, resource elasticity. And uh, yeah, Girdle is our solution to resolve all this such kind of issue we identify. And here's a high level architecture we have uh, in Girdle. And compared to the monolithic uh, architecture of uh, Valina uh, Kube Scheduler, we uh, designed uh, Girdle to be a distributed scheduler with shared cluster state. And we partition the scheduling framework into three parts. Uh, uh, first of all, we have dispatcher to handling all the pre-scheduling stuff, uh, such as queuing, sorting, and admission. And uh, moving along the scheduling path, uh, we have scheduler to make this uh, potential scheduling proposal. And uh, uh, after that, uh, at this layer, it's also the most heavy lifting part of the scheduling. Because remember, we are dealing with like 20K nodes and the one million pod. Uh, yeah, this is huge and we need to make it efficient. So that's why we are uh, trying to design a like, uh, uh, scale out uh, design as this layer to make the scheduling, especially the scheduler, uh, to dealing with its task very efficiently. And at the, at the end, we have binder to resolve this uh, conflicts and also employ the optimistic concurrency to make sure this uh, con conflict resolution to be handled efficiently. And apart from that, to make sure we can like res uh, scheduling this uh, AI workloads much better, we also introduce like two layer scheduling uh, abstraction. What is uh, two layer scheduling abstraction? So within Girdle, we try to uh, abstract the concept of scheduling, scheduling unit. So instead of just scheduling pod, we are uh, trying to scheduling uh, the scheduling unit. The uh, scheduling unit could be either a pod group or a pod. So pod group is for like again scheduling and pod for regular scheduling. And yeah, there could be m much more uh, cases, uh, but uh, yeah, we'll revisit once the requirement coming in. And uh, yeah, in terms of this two layer scheduling framework, uh, yeah, we have the unit level framework and the pod level framework. And uh, yeah, so for the unit level framework, we trying to, in, uh, so, taking this like machine learning training, for example. So because in this such kind of case, we need to think about this topology affinity. So that means we need to be topology affinity aware. And yeah, I yeah, will share some of the key feature we have to resolve this issue, but I will quickly uh, share some highlights here. So within the unit level, both unit level framework and the pod level framework, we make it pluggable. And uh, the pod, uh, pod level framework is pretty similar to the uh, Vali, uh, Valina, uh, the scheduling framework within Valina uh, Coop scheduler. But uh, the unit level framework is pretty much new, uh, new thing. So we have two major plugin. The first thing is the locating plugin, and the second one is a grouping plugin. So the locating plugin is um, focusing on dealing with this hard requirement in uh, specified in our topology affinity. And uh, the grouping plugin will uh, consider the preference we specify as a soft constraint in our topology affinity. So that, yeah, so think about a, a machine learning training job. Uh, if we are scheduling it, we will consider the network latency could be within the topology. And we try to make sure uh, the, the GAN of pod will have the lowest uh, uh, network latency. So you guys must be very curious, how did we do in terms of the, uh, with, uh, within the hyperscale infrastructure? Here's some numbers uh, we have. And uh, yeah, we, have, we are uh, within the service level agreement 
at the scale of uh, up to 20k nodes and 1 million pod, we are targeting on uh, achieve this uh, scheduling latency, uh, P99 to be less than one minute, and the scheduling pod up to uh, like 1,000 pods per second. It's not the, uh, one, we can be higher, but yeah, this is to consider the whole stability of our cluster, the pod creation rate is capped at 1,000. So yeah, that's why we have this kind of number. Okay, so, so much for the GERD overview, and yeah, we'll take it up here and share some key features, and we'll give, show you guys some fantastic demo. Uh, thank you, Lin Tong. So, uh, yeah, so here are a few uh, key features that we want to highlight in this talk. Uh, so first, uh, let's look at job level affinity, which uh, Lin Tong mentioned uh, also in his introduction. Uh, so job level affinity is an advanced feature which was built up upon GAN scheduling. Uh, so GAN scheduling is able to achieve an all or nothing syntax uh, through a CRD called pod group. Uh, I believe some of you are already familiar with the uh, concept of GAN scheduling or batch scheduling. Uh, so in our pod group, uh, we define this mean member. So that means uh, the, uh, only if a pod uh, greater than mean member can be scheduled at the same time, then they can be scheduled in this scheduling cycle. Otherwise, uh, all of them will remain in pending state. So job level affinity uh, is uh, extended beyond GAN scheduling by pre uh, providing with uh, preferred and required affinity terms. Uh, so Lin also mentioned, so preferred is like a soft constraint, uh, which can help you divide your node groups based on uh, network topologies, but still allows uh, scheduling flexibility across the topology domains. And uh, required is a hard constraint, uh, which means the group of your pods must be scheduled within the defined topology key so that they can all be scheduled. And uh, this feature is very crucial for some workloads such as large scale machine learning jobs uh, because uh, for ML job, uh, they will require that all of their pods in the same job schedule to uh, the same, say, network topology domain so that they can minimize the uh, communication overhead across different network topologies. And specifically in this example, in this screenshot, uh, we defined preferred topology key as in a uh, micro net, which represents a, like a smaller network segment in the cluster. And uh, that means the 10 pods of this pod group, they prefer to be scheduled within this smaller network segment. But if we can fit them in one uh, larger network segment called mainnet here, they can still be scheduled uh, in, in this scheduling attempt. So uh, now let's take a look at a quick demo of job level affinity. Um, so before I sh uh, showcase the demo, I want to mention that uh, all the YAML files we used here and also the step-by-step -step guide is also available in our online code uh, repo. So you are free to check it out and uh, play with it yourself locally. Okay, uh, let's go to the demo. So first, uh, let's check for the uh, cluster environments here. So uh, here I have six worker nodes in this kind cluster, and uh, I specifically tagged um, mainnet labels to be the same for the first three workers, uh, which indicates that they are in the same, like larger network segment. And uh, for worker two and three, they are in the same uh, macronet, which is a smaller network segment. And for worker four, five, and six, they are in um, different mainnet. Okay, um, and first, let's uh, look at our uh, deployment YAML files for satisfying the preferred topology. So here uh, is our first deployment demo file, and uh, I put in replica sets in 10 pods, and the annotations here suggest that these pods will belong to uh, this pod group named NJNX in this demo. Um, and let's look at the corresponding pod group spec. So here uh, I defined a uh, main member as 10, which is the same as in the screenshot in the uh, slides. And also I defined the same pod group affinity here for preferred and required. Okay. Uh, and let's then create 
this uh, pod group and also this deployment. And after a while, we can, uh, we can check the scheduling results. OK, so as you can see, that all of the pods, they are scheduled to either worker two or worker three. Uh, and as we, we can recall from the network label here, they are in the same micronet. So that means at this time, uh, the pod groups can find uh, a micronet that satisfies their scheduling requirements so that we satisfy their preferred affinity terms in this context. And now, uh, next, let's look at another case where we cannot satisfy uh, the requirements for preferred. Um, so next, I will use another deployment file uh, and a new uh, pod group YAML. So at this time, I expanded the uh, mean member to be 15 so that the resources uh, in that micronet cannot uh, be sufficient for this group of pods. And we will also have another uh, deployment YAML file here, which corresponding to that new pod group and also defines replicas as 15. Um, and then let's uh, clean up the environment and create this workload. And after a while, we can check the scheduling results. And at this time, we can see that uh, worker one, two, and three are used as the uh, nodes for these new deployments. So recall that worker one through three, they are in the same uh, main night. So that means the required topology can still be satisfied. So that's why we can schedule uh, this pod group in this attempt. Uh, yeah, so that's the quick demo on job level affinity. And uh, now let's continue our presentation. Uh, so uh, what we have shared is like the basic required and uh, preferred affinity terms in job, uh, job level affinity. And we also offer some uh, other advanced capabilities beyond that. For example, we support defining node selector uh, at the pod group level. Uh, so this is uh, very similar to what you will define for no selector in the pod spec, but it's just you can defend this for a group of pods. And beyond that, we also support so sort rules um, based on different uh, resource dimensions and either in ascending or descending order. So for example, in this particular uh, screenshot, uh, I defined uh, the sort rules as to sort GPU, CPU, and memory in ascending order. So that means uh, for the group of feasible, feasible nodes, uh, scheduler will rank them based on their uh, resource capacity uh, in the ascending order. So that means the nodes with less resources will have a higher chance of uh, hosting the pods. So that can give us sort of a bin packing effects on the node groups, and that can help us reduce resource fragmentation. Uh, yeah, so that's all on job level affinity. And uh, now we want to share this. Uh, so we are very excited about this feature. We just open sourced it recently. It's called resource reservation. Uh, so Lin Tong also mentioned about re resource elasticity. And it's that uh, during the off-peak hours, uh, we want some uh, lower priority offline jobs to be able to borrow the resources from the online services uh, because those resources are idle at that time. But however, when uh, the peak hours are coming, we also want those uh, online services to be able to get their resources back as quickly as possible. And this is where resource reservation comes into play uh, because re resource reservation can mark the reserved nodes uh, of those online pods uh, after they scale down. So after they scale back, they can quickly match those reserved resources, uh, evade uh, the offline pods on the resources and just directly schedule the online services back to their original nodes. Uh, so we can, re uh, re re uh, we can achieve a very high efficiency of online services scaling up. And now we will also do a quick demo to showcase how resource reservation works. Um, <clears throat> so let's first uh, take a look at this deployment file. So uh, here in this annotation, there is a specific one called 
uh, godel.bydance.com backslash reservation equals to be true. So this is how uh, the deployment can mark itself as the one that want to uh, reserve the resource when it's, when it's scaled down. Okay, and then uh, let's apply this deployment. And after a while, we can check the scheduling results. Uh, so now we can see the three pods are scheduled to worker node three, worker node two, and worker two. Uh, remember this scheduling results for a bit. And now let's scale down uh, this deployment. And so th this will delete the three pod replicas. Okay, and then uh, Gordo will do its magic. It will create the reservation objects in this cluster. And we can see that it will create one reservation object corresponding to each pod before uh, it was scaled down. Um, and the name is corresponding to the pod name. And also, the, it records the previous node name, which the pod was previously scheduled on. So that's how it saves the mapping between the pod and the reserved resources. Okay, and <clears throat> after a while, uh, we can scale up this uh, deployment, and we can check the scheduling results again. Okay, so we can see that the scaled up pods, they are directly scheduled on the exact the same previous three nodes, which is two worker two and uh, one worker three nodes. So yeah, that's basically how reservation works. And we can also get an insider view by checking a specific annotation called reservation placeholder in the uh, scaled up pods YAML file. And this, uh, this annotation was put by Godel scheduler, so that means it has found a particular uh, reservation object in the cluster for this particular pod. And uh, the placeholder name are corresponding to the uh, previous reservation object name that we just saw. Okay, so uh, if you don't want a resource re reservation, it's totally fine. Uh, you can disable this by just uh, removing the uh, reservation annotation in the deployment file. So it, we, we just remove this annotation, and if we uh, scale down this deployment again, we can see that uh, there's no reservation objects created in, uh, in this cluster. So that means resource reservation did not take place in this time. <coughs> okay, uh, this is the demo on resource reservation. And beyond that, we want to quickly work through another two advanced features. <coughs> uh, so this one is called macro topology scheduling or NUMA aware scheduling. Uh, this is particularly useful for some uh, workloads that are very uh, sensitive to latencies that they require their pods to be scheduled within the same NUMA node uh, so that they can minimize the uh, memory access latency which was caused by cross NUMA memory access. And this was achieved by uh, the macro topology plugins in the Godel scheduling system. And also this feature will uh, require the scheduler to work with a node agent, uh, which can report new my level resources from the nodes. And at Bydance, we use this resource management system called uh, Catalyst for its capability to uh, report the new my resources through its own custom node resource objects. And Catalyst is also an open source project. And you, uh, if you are interested, you are free to look more details into it. And one last uh, pretty new feature is called uh, real-time load-aware scheduling. So this can uh, get, uh, so be beyond using the static CPU configuration, say in the pod spec, it can uh, really check on the uh, real-time uh, load on the nodes. So take CPU for example, it could uh, check the real-time CPU usage on each node and based on that information to try to schedule the pods and try to spread uh, the workloads in the, in the cluster. So we, we use this to help us uh, address some particular uh, hotspot issues which we observe in production. And again, load aware also requires uh, scheduler to work with a node agent to report the real-time 
load usage data in the in the nodes. And again, at Bedance, we use Catalyst for this capability. Uh, and since we mentioned Catalyst a few times, um, there's actually another session which is focused on Catalyst in uh, tomorrow afternoon. And our colleague will uh, introduce like how uh, nodes aggregate real-time resource usage and some amazing innovations regarding service profiling. So we highly recommend you to join that session if you are interested in this topic. Okay. Okay. So yeah, let's get to the achie achievement uh, section. Uh, here we are going to talk about uh, the achievements we have made so far in our production exercise and as well as academic contribution. Uh, yeah, I will uh, just uh, share production uh, achievements by, uh, like uh, by sharing how did we resolve our main pain points. So first of all, the resource utilization. Uh, with Girdle, we were able to achieve uh, uh, around like 35% uh, peak CPU uh, utilization uh, in one of the select selected uh, ultra large cluster. And uh, uh, the most importantly, the average CPU utilization was improved uh, to around like a high 50 ish to uh, from the low 30 ish uh, without Girdle. And the second one is the resource elasticity. Uh, as I uh, mentioned that we, uh, before Gerdo, we have split brain in terms of the resource management and we need to, uh, uh, all, we will always need to plan ahead to uh, have the operation team to move resource around to uh, like, uh, like meet the requirement of the major event, so, something like Black Friday, Spring Festival, and uh, like Super Bowl. And, uh, but with Girdle, we were able to achieve like minute level uh, like automatic resource transferring before uh, between this online and offline resource pool. So it uh, greatly save our uh, operational costs and also greatly avoid this uh, any unexpected human error. And regarding the resource fragmentation, yeah, we also made some achievement here. In, uh, we introduced some uh, like uh, enhancement uh, in the bin packing algorithm to uh, like to achieve like 20% of the uh, less uh, GPU uh, resource fragmentation. And uh, yeah, before Gerdo, the like resource uh, we lose around like 30% uh, available capacity, and we were uh, it was reduced to 10%. And apart from the achievement in uh, production, we also we are also very active in academic contribution. Uh, our paper around Girdle schedule was accepted in uh, SOCC 2023, and uh, we are uh, currently we are also working on some uh, paper uh, about our, the performance enhancement we have uh, we made in uh, Girdle to better explain how did we do to achieve the uh, low latency and high throughput. Okay, next session will be the future work, and we yeah, will take it up back in. Thank you. Uh, so we have shared uh, other things we have done so far and some uh, recent updates, and we are also excited to share something coming soon, and you can expect in the future. Uh, so the first is we are also working on open sourcing our uh, GoDell risk scheduler. Uh, so risk scheduler will work with uh, GoDell scheduler to reschedule the pods uh, that were previously scheduled uh, based on like uh, cluster state changes. Because we know that uh, the cluster uh, state is constantly changing after the scheduler scheduled the pod once, uh, so that rescheduler can, uh, based on different strategies, to op keep optimizing your scheduling results in the cluster. So for example, uh, we will offer GPU beam packing uh, rescheduler strategies, uh, which means that you can use that to uh, keep reducing or managing your resource fragmentation issue in your GPU clusters. Um, the second one is called uh, all-in-one mode. Uh, so as Linton mentioned in the architecture, currently we are designed and deployed in the production as a uh, distributed uh, mode for those three components. 
And we are currently exploring this all-in-one mode so that we can provide an all-in-one binary for a smaller scale cluster to utilize a Godel scheduler so that it is easier to deploy and maintain. And we are also benefiting from our high throughput and our uh, rich functionalities. Uh, and also we are working to uh, further improve our performance optimization in the scheduling algorithms. Um, and also we are working to achieve a more standardized and extensible framework for the open source community as well. Um, <clears throat> uh, last thing is uh, we also aim to do more uh, ecosystem construction work in the future. Um, for example, we want to explore how we can uh, provide compatible APIs for those popular upstream framework, such as PyTorch and TensorFlow. Yeah, so this basically concludes our talk to get today. Uh, thank you very much for listening to this talk. And this is the link to our online uh, code, code repo. Uh, you are free to check out and play with the quick start guides and all the features we provided there. And uh, please also give us a star if you like it. <laughs> we will appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, we can take some questions. Right. I'm going to ask the first question. Thank you so much for sharing the work. This is super impressive. Um, one thing I want to double check is that when you say you do the resource aware parts uh, node scheduling, are you suggesting you are using software quota instead of hard quota? Um, and the other thing is that you know when you have this kind of mixed workload scheduling running on the same node, a typical problem we'll run into is a noisy neighbor issue when there are very you know expensive I/O things. Do you have any suggestion to tackle them? Thank mm -hmm. you. Okay. Um, take that. Okay. Uh, so that's a good question. So. Yeah, that's another, uh, maybe it deserves another session to talk about it, because it, uh, it's about some uh, major project we are working on uh, in-house, like uh, it's called co-location. Uh, that means we want to co-locate the online, offline workload, maybe on the same node. And, but regarding the noisy neighbor issue you just mentioned, we are going to, if the online workload is very latency critical, and we want to enforce that. We are going to uh, apply some of the uh, topology affinity, such as Numa node, Numa aware. So we will binding the CPU set. We are going to also have this uh, bind, binding the Numa node to make sure noise neighbor will not uh, inf uh, have any influence to our uh, critical online workload. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. Uh, hi, great talk, by the way. A uh, couple quick questions. So um, you mentioned that the max number of nodes you support right now is around 20,000 and 1 million pods total. I'm sure ByteDance has a much bigger footprint than that, as you mentioned. So do you run like different instances of Godel scheduler for like each set of clusters that hit 20,000 nodes? Like, what uh, is the, I'm curious about the cluster topology that it looks like. So. Yeah, I will, uh, I'm not sure whether it's okay <laughs> to answer that, but yeah, we are running different workload based on the scenario. So uh, we think, think about it like for like a GPU training, maybe you uh, deserve a dedicated workload and so we are going to try, uh, working on trying to explore if we can co-locate some of the like offline application which uh, can uh, leverage the, uh, idle resources, mm. uh, that's one thing. Like for the 20K cluster, it mostly like the uh, combination of the microservices uh, along with batch job. You know, like microservices is pretty, uh, usually it request a lot of uh, resources, but it act, sometimes it's actually not used uh, most of, most yeah, of it. Yeah, throughput is much lower. Yeah, yeah but, uh, and for the batch job, it can wait. Uh, as long as we queue, uh, it enters the queue, the customer or user will be satisfied and uh, maybe uh, after, before get off the work, it will submit the job and uh, the next day it will come to check the result. And uh, yeah, and you know, like for the, in the early morning, right, it's usually the uh, low, uh, use, we, we have low usage of online 
uh, resources. So that's the time we maybe we will borrow the resources to offline workload. And that's the time the offline workload will start to execute and be running and to, uh, yeah, to try to leverage the idle resources. Nice. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, one more question. Um, could you talk a little bit more about your quota management, uh, especially when there is a resource borrowing you know, between offline and online, how do you make sure that there quota is Quota management, right? Yeah, quota management. Yes. Okay, yeah, currently, uh, Goro have no uh, design, uh, like building uh, quota management. It's actually external one, uh, something like Q. We also have an alternative uh, summary to that. So it sits in front of the, uh, like, critical path, and before, uh, yeah, uh, the workload will enter into the queue and the quota system, and after the quota check has been completed, it will enter Girdle system to uh, complete the scheduling. Uh, yeah, so uh, maybe one thing to add on to Lin Tong's answer is we, uh, so talking about collocating online and offline workloads, we'll have different quota, uh, different quota queues for online and offline jobs. And for the uh, offline jobs, we we'll also rely on uh, Catalyst, which was mentioned in the presentation earlier, uh, for its reported resources through its own uh, custom node resource objects. And we can use that information as source of truth and calculate the uh, re resource quota for the offline job so that we can collocate both of them together. Yeah, so Girdle uh, schedule system is the whole ecosystem. Girdle schedule is one part of it. We have our uh, enhanced Cooper, uh, Cube API server, our own metadata store, and Catalyst serve as a, like, uh, a node agent to reporting this uh, real-time metrics. Yeah. It deserves a separate uh, session each. And yeah, we expect to share that in a later session. Looking forward to all of them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you, everyone. Yeah.